Welcome back to Bonchon Warrior, where we live wonderfully and bring our best. This is Ian Schneider, your host, and today, let's resume our previously interrupted programming. Okay. So, yeah, and this year, I'll be teaching、uh, elective English, which is a new thing. High schools are introducing electives in second grade.、Uh, so... 11th grade in K to 12. I was gonna, I was gonna point that <laughs> out. My parents always get confused when I tell them I'm teaching first graders. They're like, Ian, you teach at a high school. <laughs> so when he says first graders, that corresponds to about 10th grade in Western school systems. He says second graders, that usually means about 11th grade. Yeah. Okay. My parents get confused too. <laughs> I'll say, with first grade, I'm doing this and this and this. And they say, That sounds really advanced for first grade, Brian. Have you thought this through? <laughs> yeah. And then I have to explain again.、Mm. It means 10th grade. Yeah. With the 11th grade students, we'll do elective English. And hopefully, if coronavirus doesn't scuttle our plans, hopefully I will be teaching them in blocks of time rather than spread out once per week.、Mm. I'll have them for a three week block. So I'm going to have them, my plan is to have them make short films.、Uh -huh. And. That will be maybe a little more involved, where there is a little more of a detailed rubric.、Mm. And a problem I've had with rubrics in the past is I can make them read the rubric and understand it, but then they forget the next week, and it's too many details for them to keep remembering. Dude, I teach Korean English teachers, they don't read my rubrics <laughs> either. <laughs> but I'm thinking if there's a three week block and they're meeting me each lesson without a break, then maybe they can process the rubric a bit more. So I'm g o n n a Oh, Try、yeah. again, hopefully. Okay. So that'll be a bit more of an、uh, involved project. And I'm looking forward to that. That's exciting.、Uh, I think, in general, the main thing I want is for them to really use English to get past their fear of, like, they think their grammar has to be perfect.、Mm. And they constantly ask Korean co teachers, how do you say this in English? And they kind of. Load up perfect English into their brain and then spit it out. And I really want、mm. to scuttle that. So I think assessment is always second to just finding ways to get them to be comfortable and use their intra language comfortably in class. Yeah, yeah. So that's the first thing. And then I try to do assessment so that it supports that. I love you bring up the idea of intra language.、Um, you talk, when you talk about how much you try to encourage peer to peer speaking, And how that's a part of your assessment process.、Um, what is your sort of,、um, I wanna say, tolerance, or what is your、uh, degree of how much you allow them to communicate in Korean in order to arrive at perhaps more English communication down the road? I, so, first, if I think that they're pushing their English level and using Korean to support that, then that's good. And now, more and more people are talking about translanguaging, which is like, Not so, all my students are Korean and they、mm -hmm. speak Korean. It's silly to pretend that they don't.、Mm -hmm. So, just not putting up barriers between languages, translanguaging,、sure. allowing languages to mix is useful.、Mm -hmm. uh, so, I'm okay with that. But I do get frustrated if, if we're doing some kind of speaking game and they only engage with the game part and they use Korean where they could use English. Oh, yeah. And they're, they're kind of. Not taking any responsibility for pushing their English. I get、mm -hmm. frustrated with that. And I get especially frustrated if, they, if I'm giving them some kind of task to solve、mm -hmm. and they're solving it in Korean and then saying to the Korean English teacher, translate this into English and、oh. tell it to me and I'll, I'll spit it out.、Yeah. I get very frustrated with that. And that's also, I think, an issue with Korean English teachers sometimes is that there's a lot of focus on. The language that comes out being perfect without thinking about the process and what's going on in students' minds. So that's the Korean that I get the most frustrated with. Yeah, if only my, if only my former students and like the trainees I work with knew the grammar that I use outside of the classroom, <laughs> they would never question using perfect grammar because, in my opinion, there's no <laughs> such thing. Yeah, they, I think there's a lot of focus on sentence grammar and not much focus on doing. Discourse in English, like、yes. making a paragraph in English, not making it in Korean first and then translating it、mm. word by word, but making it in English. So、yeah. I try and try to get students to do that more. And that's part of why I do the messaging 
writing back and forth because oh. then it's like okay we can start with sentences but i want you to build up to paragraphs in english right not just understanding how to create a sentence that's grammatical but also mm. how all of those sentences cohere in the mm. form of a discourse or a text yes oh that's really really important and i think that has to be it really helps if it's meaningful to them because they do in their textbooks they get a lot of english texts but the, it's not really meaningful to them and then they attack those texts by translating word by word so right, right. getting them to understand like feel that <laughs> when you write a paragraph it's your paragraph it's not it's not about the grammar in each sentence it's about the whole paragraph i never thought about that it sounds like what you're saying is um, because the korean educational system right now so much emphasizes like just reading these texts and it's almost like they don't feel ownership over it. But when you, mm. ask, when you ask them to sort of produce their own kind of text and paragraphs and you give them that ownership, it's really useful to help develop their communication skills and even like, motivating them a little bit better for English. Yeah, motivating them a little bit Just better. a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> they could be a little more motivated, but yeah. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. In April, mm. coronavirus permitting, we're going to have a <laughs> lot of new native teachers coming to Jolanamdo and different parts of Korea. You've had so much experience. If you could tell, if you could tell first year in Korea, Brian, <laughs> some advice of how to be the best native teacher that you can be, if you're brand new to teaching, mm. what would you tell yourself? What would you tell to these new teachers? Okay, so I think I have three things. My uh, first, of course. my first advice would be you have to do classroom management. You can't avoid classroom management. Okay. And I think when I was first here and I see other new native teachers getting into this pattern of almost like a standoff or avoidance where they say, oh, but my Korean co-teacher is supposed to do the classroom management. Mm. I'm just here to do the English. Right. But you really can't avoid it. And also, you're, a lot of the time, your Korean co-teachers also lack experience with classroom management mm -hmm. so you end up with two teachers who are kind of being avoidant about it and not talking to each other about it so i basically think you cannot avoid it you have to be ready to be in charge of a room full of students yourself take initiative take authority yeah but it's not take initiative but it's not rocket science like you don't have mm -hmm. to get it perfect and if you just start breaking it down into little parts that you can strategize about mm. it's really not like very quickly you won't regret taking it on i think like it has a lot of benefits mm -hmm. classroom mm -hmm. management is as simple as like how are the students entering the classroom and how the, is the classroom set up when they come in yeah and yeah. what what's your technique for getting them to all settle down and listen mm -hmm. and there are a lot of different things you can experiment with that but it's just these little things it's really not that insurmountable and you don't have to be perf perfect about it and no one's perfect like i have experience but <laughs> i still have a lot of work to do on this but mm -hmm. there's you like just get started on it you really won't regret it i think that most student misbehavior mostly tends to come from either unclear expectations or quite frankly boring lessons <laughs> Not, that's my best class management class management tip make your lessons interesting to them but mm. um yeah, what you're saying is build it brick by brick so that the students are familiar and they're very clear on the, like the expectations and procedures of your class. I think, yeah, I think that. And also, like you said, brick by brick. I think, for example, a really detailed PPT with a lot of information in it, that is not classroom management. That's just a big load of stuff yeah, that you're yeah. going to drop on them. Mm -hmm. And that's like, you mentioned boring. I think sometimes my best lessons, students still say they're boring. Yeah. But if you're doing that kind of just standing at the front of the room and dumping or broadcasting information, um. you're not really doing classroom management. It, as you said, brick by brick, like in general, I think it's better if what's happening is you do something and students do something. Mm -hmm. So if you're, for example, if your instructions are like, a three minute wall of text that's not going to do anything you should say a little you should say something and students should say something back or mm. students should react mm. like a little bit a little bit and then you're getting the students like there's traction they can I've actually been pretty uh, fortunate not too many <laughs> not too many disruptions hopefully that was 
peak hour. <laughs> I hope so. I mean, how many more <laughs> delivery trucks can stop by this place? <laughs> if you are doing things where you give the tiniest bit of instructions you can, and then students have to react or show understanding mm. in some way, then they can get traction on what's going on, and you're building up a discourse with them. Yeah. And then, even then, even if the expectations aren't totally clear, because sometimes you have, for example, you might have co-teachers who all behave differently, or the school overall might not be good at setting clear expectations, mm. but if you can have a way of kind of creating the dialogue with students where you build up expectations together, mm -hmm. then it will work better, I think. Ah, building together. That's, mm -hmm. I, love, I love that. Try to give them a little bit of a voice. What mm -hmm. about number two? Let's take a break. We can resume this topic in another time. But for now, I hope everyone is having a wonderful week. And this is Ian from Banchan Warrior reminding you to live wonderfully and always bring your best.